by was keeping me from something that was much larger and from something that was much greater. And we have to realize that, that if the devil can't stop us, then he's going to try to distract us. You see, he couldn't keep them from building the temple, but he just put money changers in there. And he made all kind of commerce and all kind of noise so that people couldn't use the house of God for what it was supposed to be used for. And you see, this is what's been happening with us. We're trying to come here and have the purpose of God and to move forward. But there's all these things that have been around us that have been distracting us in our minds and finances and emotional issues with our families and things going on in the church and, and issues here and then un stableness and then we're in an election season and we don't know what's going to happen to our economy and we don't know what's going to happen with our presidency and what's going to happen with the direction of our government and what's going to happen with the war and is it going to keep on going on and we got people over there that we love and oh god it's distraction 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 but what am i being distracted from what should i really be focusing on if i can get my eyes on what this is really all about then we're going to synergize our spirits again and we're going to have a breakthrough moment Moment. And this is what happened with Joshua. Joshua had lived for 40 years, but he could not do anything. He had been held back. But when God finally said, okay, you got the green light, there was no distraction in him. There was complete focus. We have one agenda. We are going to Canaan and we are going to conquer this land. There is nothing else on our agenda but that. We will not waste our time talking about anything else. And that's the reason why when they came to Jericho, this is what he said. Shut up and march. Excuse me for being so frank with you tonight, but our murmuring can get us in trouble. We can talk ourselves out of it. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the walls and we'll talk about this and we'll talk about that. And you know what Joshua says? We got one focus. God said we're going to take this city. God said we are going to take this land. So you're going to shut your mouth and you're just going to march. And we're going to just keep talking about what God said we're going to do. What God said we're going to do. There has to be a fundamental shift in our thinking. The bottom line is, the reason why they did not go over the first time and take the land was because they did not have the instinct of conquering. And the reason why many of us never finish what God started in us is because we don't know how to close the deal. We don't know how to stay with it. We don't have the tenacity because we don't have the supporting undergirding of the right structure and the right thinking that says God has anointed me to do this Hallelujah! but the generation that went in had an entirely different mentality Joshua said there was only two of us that got it right the first time so I'm only sending two the second time I'm not sending twelve I'm just sending two you see as we move into the next dimension, we must correct the mentality of the past in order to get the right mentality for our future. There has to be adjustments in the calendar. There has to be times when we, when we adjust to get the maximum light. That's what daylight saving time is all about. We call it daylight savings, but it's really daylight saving. We're trying to save as much light as possible for us to walk in it and live in it and enjoy it. How many want to maximize this moment in your life with God? Now, you can live the rest of your life distracted, or you can say, God, this is a moment of alignment for me. This is a moment of Boom. It's time for me to have a correction where God can get me in alignment with him so I can maximize this time of my life and be totally in tune with him to hear what he is saying. There's adjustments in our thinking and somewhere we have to step back and say, why haven't I already done this? Why haven't I already conquered? Well, we sing about it. Well, we're more than conquerors. We talk about it all the time. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We say it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The problem is it doesn't define 
define us. These are not defining scriptures to us. These are just little encouraging scriptures for us to just keep on going in our nice little cycle in the wilderness. But until we break out of that and we become defined as conquerors, it's not just a, that, that, that you're a conqueror or that you have the possibility of conquering. You have to say we are made for this moment. We were made to conquer. God has given the city to us. This is our time. There has to be an instinct in us that says everything has been designed to get us here. Is this making sense to anybody right now? Transforming revelation. Notice now, notice what happens to these two spies. Totally different from the first. The first spies walked unchecked through the land. I mean, they were stepping off people's backyards, measuring it, you know. How tall the walls were how wide they were they knew the exact measurements can you imagine somebody coming in your backyard and stepping it off and measuring the thickness of your foundation maybe looking at your car and you know smiling at it yeah all right i'm gonna have that one right there you know and the neighbors just kind of go well did you see those weird old people walking through the neighborhood yeah and nobody says a word these two spies go over there and as soon as they see them they chase them all over the place they run after them and they try to kill them. They're hiding in the house of a harlot. How's that for your reputation? And their response is, Woo! Because they had the revelation. If you don't have revelation and the enemy is chasing you, you mope about it. I couldn't believe it. We went over there to look out over the land. We couldn't look at anything. Couldn't measure anything. We couldn't even stay outside to check the weather. They chased us, ran us down. We had to hide in the house of a heart. How's that going to affect my family reputation? What are people going to think about me? Folks, when you're walking in Revelation, you see it through entirely different lens. You know what they came back? You know what they said? Everybody in this land is terrified of us. Surely God has given us all this land. Why? They had a revelation. I was made to take over this place. And when I showed up, the enemy knew it. And that's the reason why he retaliated. Every retaliation is nothing but a confirmation that it's my time, it's my moment, and we're here to take over. So bring it on, devil. Bring everything you got. It's all it's going to do is tell me. It must be that we're about to have the greatest harvest and the greatest revival that we have ever had in the history of the world. Are there any conquerors in the house? Is there anybody with a defining revelation that God can get you alignment with his purpose? God's not working in the wilderness anymore. He's working in Canaan. And it's time to get with God. Stand to your feet right now and clap your hands to the Lord. God doesn't have defeat in his dictionary. God's never lost a fight. And you know what he said? I'm going to give you my armor. Put on the whole armor of God. I'm going to let you fight with what I fight with. You know why? Because you're made in my image. You got my spirit. I gave you my name. You're built with the same thing I'm built with. You are more than a conqueror. Everyone say, I'm more than a conqueror. And everything that happens in my life, even my setbacks, are setups for me to go to the next level. Even the attacks that happen to me, that seem to keep me from my purpose, are only there to serve the reality that I am in the will of God. Or else he would have never fought me this hard. You know what? This church really needs to celebrate tonight. Because if the devil fought you as hard as he fought you in 2007, 
it must be that God's got great things in store for you. But even better, you need to celebrate that he brought everything he could bring and we're still here.